I'm back. I got more fire. That means I have more wise words. In the Xiaomi ecosystem product launch that they had yesterday, they kind of let it slip that they are going to be releasing the Poco F2 Pro as the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. Now in Xiaomi's own words, this is their product lineup. One of the most frequent questions I get asked is about our product lines. Our goal is to make sure that there's an ideal device for absolutely any budget. To quickly explain, we have our Mix and Mi series premium flagships, our Mi Note and Mi T flagships, which feature probably the best camera experience you could possibly get. Now this makes sense. They have the Mix line, which is like their aspirational premium kind of experimental model. They have their Mi series, which now is a full-fledged flagship device that's meant to compete with other flagship like devices, but at about three quarters of the cost. They have their Mi Note series, which is their flagship device, and their Mi Note series is kind of like their breakthrough mobile photography, like it, it's essentially the cameras that they put on their top of the end Mi series, but with a lower tier processor. Basically the devices that I'm going to probably be buying after this because I don't think that I need anything more than a Snapdragon 7 series processor. But in that lineup, in their flagship devices, they're non-premium, but they're just regular flagship devices. Xiaomi also announced their Mi T-Series, or they explained their Mi T-Series. And in Xiaomi's own words, their Mi T-Series is their flagship with leading display and performance. And in this, they have a picture of the Xiaomi Mi 9 T Pro, which if you guys remember, was just a rebadged Redmi K20 Pro. Now, what that means, if Xiaomi is announcing this on a stage for their European market, that places that aren't going to get the Poco F2 Pro are going to get a Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro, which is essentially going to be the Redmi K30 Pro Poco F2 Pro, which it actually means that there's four models of this device that they sell, being the K30 Pro Zoom, the K30 Pro, the Mi 10T Pro, and the Poco F2 Pro. And these are all essentially the same devices outside of the Zoom variant, but they're all for slightly different markets that fit into Xiaomi's greater overall ecosystem and plan of attack for devices in this market. Now, the Mi T series specifically is going to be in the European market because this global launch event uh, was aimed at the, the European market. Um, and this kind of makes sense that they would be launching this device as the Mi T series for these reasons. They're trying to enter these markets as like, a premium option with lots of features. Their Redmi brand of devices are all their mid-range and their lower tier devices. So introducing this device as a Redmi device in these markets doesn't really make sense because in Xiaomi's own words, Redmi is their mid-range and entry-level devices, which kind of make perfect sense. Um, in other words though, we have the Poco F2 Pro that's gonna be getting launched in some markets, but not others. So why would Xiaomi be launching a Poco F2 Pro in some markets and a Mi 10T Pro in other markets? Well, it seems like it's kind of straightforward and simple. With this global launch product event, Xiaomi was trying to bring their entire ecosystem of devices together to create some type of uniformed product line with a product strategy and products that fit into specific niches. Xiaomi isn't going to do that with one device. So in a place that Xiaomi might not sell their new Mi Air 2 basic headphones or the Mi Air 2 SE headphones for global distribution, they would sell their Poco device. In a place that they do have more or a bigger lineup of Xiaomi devices, they would launch this 
as the Mi 10T next to the Mi 10 or Mi 10 Pro. It makes it really confusing though for Xiaomi enthusiasts to keep track of all this stuff because these are all essentially the same devices. On top of that, from a software perspective, launching all of these devices with slightly different configurations, slightly different components, and more likely than not different software, it means that now that they have to, they now have to develop software for three devices or develop three different versions of software. It, it triples their work. Whereas Apple develops like one software line and then they put it on all their devices so all of their software developers can focus on that or Samsung does that or OnePlus does that outside of their Hydrogen OS which is Oxygen OS minus Google. Everything else is the same though. So it's frustrating, it's confusing, but it makes sense and I want to know what you guys think about it. Um, another thing to note is that these headphones that Xiaomi launched, in their presentation, there was nothing about the controls or being able to change their controls. Meaning, again, Xiaomi is launching this product outside of China and they are skimping on software and giving us a less than Chinese user experience. Because if you're in China, you're paying a similar amount or less money for this product, but you're getting the ability to customize the controls. So as we move forward into the future and as I see the way Xiaomi releases these products, I'm beginning to see a pattern of Xiaomi skimping on software development and it's, it's frustrating because if I'm paying a similar amount for these as I would be in China, I would like the same ability to modify controls because if these headphones had better controls, I would say that these are a real AirPods killer and they offer more functionality and better customizability and the reality is that Xiaomi is a companion app away from giving us significantly better products. One of the most frequent questions I get asked is about our product lines. Our goal is to make